country folks who are sitting at home trying to figure out what to do might also be curious about what you can make if you haven't been out and what have you got lying around. In fact, if you look at my counter, you'll notice it looks like a combination of um, what I pulled out of my pantry, which is not untrue, and a liquor cabinet from the 70s. Right here, where I got all the staples that you have in your old liquor cabinet, the stuff that's been sitting there for years. I got a random bottle of tequila, I got some new bourbon, I got a, a bottle of brandy, because you don't usually drink that very often. Like everybody's got some Jameson sitting in their, in their corner there. And of course, I was mixing something up on the stove. Um, this right here is a um, grapefruit uh, with a grapefruit cardamom gastrique is what it was called. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make this in just a few moments. I'm going to let this cool so you don't have to wait for me to make it for the next time. But I do want to give you that recipe. So the idea behind today's video is pretty much just to kind of look at what you've got sitting around in your kitchen and what you're trying to figure out. You have all this stuff. You want to have yourself a good drink. Whiskey on the rocks is getting tired. You don't want to try too many crazy stuff. And you've got these bottles of things like bottles of vermouth sitting in your cabinet. Or maybe you don't have any vermouth at all and you're dying for a Manhattan. We're going to try a couple of really interesting things today. You can see I've got uh, drinks. We're going to make some drinks with some cardamom. We're going to make some drinks with some juice. We're going to make some drinks with white wine vinegar and balsamic vinegar. We're going to make our drink with our ruby red grapefruit juice. So we're going to start off right away with a straightforward Manhattan. Manhattan is probably one of the easiest things that you can do. Um, I've got a nice martini glass sitting here chilling. I don't have any uh, garnishes or anything like that, no cherries or anything. Because again, this is stuff that you're pulling out of your liquor cabinet. Pull it out of your fridge, pull it out of your pantry. So I checked my fridge here today. It's the fridge that you folks are living here at Everly Cape Cod. This kitchen probably looks very, very familiar. If you're just tuning in, well, this could be your kitchen. This is your fridge, fully equipped fridge, fully equipped microwave. All these things come with it, so you get to uh, really experience a lovely, expansive kitchen when you're preparing these things. Uh, you're actually in the camera, you're only seeing about half the kitchen. There's a whole lot of half over here. Um, so we're gonna start off by mixing up our Manhattan. We have my shaker. In here. Put some ice in there. And I'm going to take two parts whiskey. I'm actually, I will measure it out for the sake of you folks at home. I think I tend to pour a little heavy sometimes. So here we are. One, two parts whiskey. To one part sweet vermouth. You're saying sweet vermouth, dry vermouth, what's the difference? Well, it's really just a matter of preference, but the sweeter drinks are obviously going to have your sweeter vermouth. If you're more of a dry martini person, you can make exactly the same drink using a dry vermouth and a vodka or gin. Put them over the rocks. Again, you get your bottle of old martini, uh, uh, martini vermouth kicking around, pour that over the rocks with some whiskey. In a good shape. If you have enough cherry, you want to drop it in there as a garnish, you can. Get the fancier cherries, you can do that. Or straight up, you can just pour yourself a nice light Manhattan. I probably could have doubled up on that because it wasn't an awfully slow pour. But there you go. That's the basics of a Manhattan right there. Now, as you're trying some different things, you're experimenting with some of the drinks and things that you're going to find in your cabinets. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, um, you might have some very tart uh, liqueurs, you might have some very uh, stark liqueurs in there, and you want to figure out a way to sweeten it out. So one of the recommendations that uh, has come to me from some folks who have been in the business and folks who are chefs is pull out a bottle of jam. Maybe you got a fruit basket at Christmas. You got a bottle of apricot preserves kicking around. Maybe you're sitting there and you made a recipe somewhere along the way. Or maybe you just like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and you picked up strawberry instead of grape one day and you're like, ah, what am I going to do with this? And it's been sitting on your shelf all this time trying to figure out what to do with it. Well, we're going to make some drinks with it. So I'm going to put some ice here into my shaker again. And this time I'm going to use some rye. So I'm going to take my rye here and I'm going to pour two fours of this. There's my two ounces. And then what I want to do is I want to tarp it up. 
You want to make it a little more tart. So you're going to use something acidic. It's one of the reasons why so many of these drinks use lemon juice or lime juice. So we're going to use a variation on a couple of those as well. So we're going to put about a half an ounce Maybe actually, I think we're gonna put one and a half ounces because we're gonna be using strawberry jam. And again, I'm just kind of winging this as we go along. But the strawberry jam is gonna be a little bit on the sweet side as opposed to some of those fruit preserves that I have kicking around. So we'll put a little bit more tartness in there. Now the nice thing is the lemon is gonna go next to the strawberry. We also go really well with an apricot or a currant jam if you have something like that. So I've added these in here and now I'm gonna add my jam. And we're gonna add a couple of teaspoons. I'm not even going to measure the regular teaspoon. I'm just going to use a regular teaspoon here and we're going to kind of guess at it. So there's one heaping teaspoon. Let's add a second not so heaping. There's our jam. You saw me just throw it right in there with the, with the uh, rye whiskey. And the instructions that I received are to shake it up and really, really get a good shake. Some of you may want to stream it out. Some of you may get to uh, curious about the floor. Personally, I like my drinks when they get a little bit of texture. Uh, Get it nice and cold. We have our rocks glass. We pick it up. Put some ice in there. And here we go. I don't know if you guys can see this at home. It's got this really neat pink color to it. And it smells really good too. So we'll try that in a moment. So that is our strawberry jam drink. It doesn't even have a formal name. It's just making a drink with jam. Um, getting a little bit more complicated, we're gonna go with something that has actually become one of my favorite drinks. Now, um, I keep talking about the joy of tequila and I've been having a lot of fun with that. A lot of folks have you know, a nice bottle of tequila kicking around in their liquor cabinet and they're saying, what am I gonna do with this? Somebody brought this over for New Year's 10 years ago. I have no idea what to do with this. I'm not a big margarita fan. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Let's have a little bit of fun. You folks have probably all tried an old fashioned at one point in time. We're gonna make a Mexican old fashioned. And again, I don't have any garnish today because I'm trying to pretend we just pulled these things out of my cabinet. What I'm gonna do is instead of uh, bourbon for my old fashioned, I'm gonna use tequila. Um, it's nice to have a nicer tequila, but if you do a tequila, we're gonna use sugar, just like you would with any type of old fashioned. And we're gonna use, instead of uh, muddling a cherry and orange, we are actually just gonna use a little bit of lime juice. So we'll actually put those all together. So again, back to my shaker. And we will start, let me rinse out my jigger here. And we will start with two ounces of tequila. Two ounces of tequila right there. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to add in, so a teaspoon, we'll use a teaspoon of salt, maybe a little bit less than a teaspoon, roughly about a sugar packet. There we go, let that sink in. And then we are gonna add in our lime juice. So we are gonna do um, probably just about a half an ounce of this. Maybe a little bit less, just enough to the equivalent of a long. So there we go, I pull those out of my fridge, I'm ready to go. And the last thing I need are my bitters. Now my bitters are, um, where are my bitters? I don't have any bitters. What am I supposed to do without any bitters? Well, I'll tell you, here's the thing that's gonna really throw you for a loop. We're gonna use wine. We're gonna use vinegar. We're gonna use wine vinegar. We're actually going to try um, balsamic vinegar, and we're not gonna use a lot. Just like you wouldn't use a lot of uh, bitters, you're not gonna use a lot of this. Let's see how it pours. So we are just gonna use a dash of balsamic vinegar. And I mean just a dash right there. That may even have been too much. We're gonna find out, aren't we? Just a little bit of that. Now, the acidity of the vinegar is actually something that is traditionally used in a lot of cocktails over the years. Um, you don't normally think of it as an ingredient nowadays, but it was a very popular ingredient to help raise the acidity level of uh, your cocktails. It was an easy thing to do. When you have a lot of drinks that have brine, it does very much the same thing. Uh, and that's what we've done with this. We take out our old fashioned, we've added some sugar to sweeten it up, and we've added the vinegar to give it a little bit more acidic flavor. It'll come pretty well with the wine.
my rocks go out there. Take this out. I guarantee all of you, when you're making sense, you see this in the bigger end, you're going to go home like, wow, that is not what I expected. Of course, I haven't tried this yet, so who knows what's going to come out. But here we are. And there's a nice Mexican old fashioned made with tequila, sugar, lime juice, and a dash of balsamic pepper. How about that? I'm holding it back so I see it a little bit easier in the camera. There we go. And now the last drink that I'm going to make is something called the Cardamom Club. Now, you saw me pulling this, this uh, syrupy mixture off of the stove. I'm gonna show you how we make this. It's actually, uh, it's really, really easy. So what we do is we are going to, I'm gonna make some space here. I'm gonna move these into the camera. And now, I want you to be able to see what's going on. So we're gonna move these over here. Oh, hold on, we have a little bit of an accident here. Somebody's jumping in on me. There we go. Sorry about that. A little bit of an issue there. So I'm going to throw all my ingredients into this here. We're going to start off with one ounce of lemons. Let me rinse out my jigger. I'm going to put one ounce of lemon juice in here. One ounce of lemon, followed by one ounce of water. Now, some people like to use filtered water. I think the water here is just fine. So we're going to add that in there. And then we're going to follow that up with one cup of water, or one cup of uh, sugar. So we have and that here. Short there. So take that. Mix that up. This goes into your pot, into your pan, over medium heat. And while that's getting itself ready, we're going to add eight ounces of pink grapefruit juice. Who knows why it's in your pantry? Who knows why it's kicking around? You bought it one day, you bought it right after New Year's when you were getting on a health kick. You opened up one of the bottles, you drank some of them, you got about three and three quarters of the way through it, gave up. Now you got this other bottle sitting there that you picked up at BJ's. What are you going to do with this? Well, we're going to make some drinks on it. Take it here and you add eight ounces. And then we're going to add some cardamom. Now you can do a bunch of different things with this. The cardamom, I love cardamom, it's great, but it's also very expensive. If you have cardamom sitting in your, in your cabinet and you don't use it very often, this is a great opportunity to have some fun with it. You can take it, measure out a couple of teaspoons, I would say probably two teaspoons, maybe three, depending on how you like your flavors. If you don't have cardamom, use a little allspice, use a little bit of clove. Uh, it'll get you pretty much to the same place. It's a slightly different flavor, but it'll get you where you need to go, especially for the purposes of this drink. Now, what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to be in the process of doing, so I've got my lemon juice and my sugar and my water heating up and boiling. We're going to let that boil and sizzle. We're going to stir it until it stops bubbling. Um, once the bubbles stop, then we're going to take our grapefruit juice and our, our, our cardamom. We're going to pour that on top of that. We're going to let it boil up and simmer until it gets a little thicker. And this is what you end up with. Now, what do we do with this? Well, this is where the fun begins. So we're going to take this and we're going to make our coffee. So I'm going to rinse out my shaker here. I have to start investing in some more shakers, I think, at this point. My gosh. Let's see. And again, we'll add some ice to this. Now, what we're going to do is if you've been making drinks with it over the past few weeks, you probably already have some brandy. If not, you've got some brandy sitting in your cabinet. You can go ahead and grab some of that. Grab the brandy, okay? We're gonna take that, and we're going to add two ounces of brandy to this. Where'd my jigger go? Ah, oh, here it is. And two ounces of brandy. While I'm doing that, 
I'm going to go back to my grapefruit cardamom gastric, which is right here. And I am going to add four ounces of vinegar to this mix. We're going to use some white wine vinegar. And we're going to pour four ounces. And if you're a little leery, I'm a little leery, let's do three just to be safe. So here we go. One, two, three. Now I tried this mixture before I added the vinegar. And I can understand why we need to add the vinegar to it because it is very sweet and very syrupy. And let me see, I've got some folks here. Hi, Chris. Got some folks who are logging into our video there because we've got a meeting. We got an event coming up shortly after this. Here's some folks who are logging on to the meeting early. So we're going to go in here. We're going to stir this up with our vinegar and our syrup. We're going to get that stirred up nicely. And then we are going to add one more ounce of this gastric to the brandy. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit more because it looks really good. Yeah. You can smell the vinegar, but it doesn't smell overpowering. It's not like you're drinking a salad. It actually brings out a lot of the flavors and enhances it quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this. We're going to mix it up. You can pour this over the rock, so you can pour it just like this. Here we are. Now I gotta tell you, I'm gonna try all these, but I've been dying to try this one. So I'm gonna save it for a little bit later. Let me reach out first and try my jam cocktail and see how that goes. And it's not overpowering. A little bit of extra lemon juice was a good call. It's got a good flavor, it's got a nice little bite to it. Um, it's not overly sour. You get the strawberry flavors from the jam. I can imagine this tasting absolutely delicious with an, with an apricot jam or a currant jam, like I mentioned earlier. Definitely go with a stronger liqueur. Go with a brandy, go with a cognac, go with a rye. Something with a little bit of spice, a little bit of bite to it. It helps even out the sweetness. It's really tasty. Going to our Mexican old fashioned, made with balsamic vinegar. <clears throat> wow. That's interesting. I do think I might have used a touch more vinegar, but hey, that's means I'm gonna add some more tequila to it. Um, but it definitely adds elements. I can taste what tastes a lot like vermouth. And it has a lot of the impact that a vermouth would have uh, uh, if I had added something like that to this. Um, it definitely supplants the bitters without the herbs. Maybe I could throw a few spices in here, but it's really, really unique. And that's just a nice tequila out of your liquor cabinet, a dash of uh, a little bit of sugar, and a, a dash of uh, lime juice and a dash of uh, vinegar. And this is what you got here. My last one, let's try our cardamom club. We're looking forward to this one. Wow, that is magical. It is uh, much sweeter than you would think it would be. Uh, it tastes delicious. I'm gonna actually turn this off. I got my, my sugar bottle right there. Um, it tastes delicious. The cardamom really kicks it up. And the nice thing, the white wine and vinegar really evens it out. I think if I had actually followed the original recipe I had been given and added that extra ounce of white wine and vinegar, I might have smoothed it out even more. And so folks, this is what we've got today. So your bar from afar today is basically your bar from your pantry. Raise your closet. Now maybe you have some ideas as well. You can pull out some herbs, you can pull out some spices, pull out some basil, make some infusions. Um, I was actually very tempted to do some uh, uh, infused vodka, some coffee infused vodka today, which is why I've got my kettle once in here. Maybe we'll try that again a week later on. We'll try some infused liqueurs. Um, but really easy to put together, really tasty, lots of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have as much fun putting these together as I have had. Join us here again next week for our home.